Hey everyone, welcome back to Pocket Mars. The Extra Credits YouTube channel has recently started hosting game jams every 3-4 to four months. This past weekend was their fourth game jam and I decided that I wanted to participate. So in this video, I'll be going through the process of making Murphy's Walk, my entry for the fourth Extra Credits game jam. This was a 100 hour long jam, so I had about 5 days to make my game. I spent a few hours before the jam working on my remake of the ice fishing minigame from Club Penguin. One thing I was making specifically was the fishing line. To do this, I used the line renderer and created a script to set its vertices to two game objects in the scene. I found this mechanic to be really interesting, so once the jam began and the theme was revealed to be Connect, I knew I would have to make a game centered around this mechanic. So I started playing around with a few ideas and came up with this. There were two players connected by a line, and you could use a button to change which player you were currently controlling. I thought about what I could do with this simple concept, and decided on making a game about two people in love who had to work together to dodge various obstacles. It was getting late, so I decided I would go to sleep and continue fleshing out this idea tomorrow. But before I went to sleep, I had to take my dog for a walk. While I was walking my dog, I realized that instead of the line render in my prototype being some sort of abstract representation of the love two people share, it would make a lot more sense as a dog leash. And with that, the premise of my game changed to be about a man and his dog going on a dangerous walk together with lots of hazards. When I got home, I was really excited to start bringing this idea to life, so instead of going to sleep, I started working on the character art. For each of their jams, Extra Credits makes a list of 5-10 to 10 optional challenges for participants to incorporate into their games. One of them was to use only a two-color palette, so I decided I would go for a simple, retro, monochromatic art style similar to the Game Boy. After making sprites for the man and the dog and importing them into Unity, I had to adjust some settings to make sure they would be displayed correctly in the scene. I changed the pixels per unit to 16, the filter mode to point, and removed all compression for both sprites. Then I installed the 2D Pixel Perfect package from the Unity Package Manager and added the Pixel Perfect camera to the main camera in the scene. The cool thing about this was that now everything in my scene would be rendered in a 160x144 resolution, including the leash connecting the dog and the man. Now that the core of the game was complete, I decided to go to bed for real this time. My original plan for the game was to make around 10 levels by hand, so I spent most of day 2 setting up the basic structure for the levels. I used Unity's tile map system to create a basic looking street with some bushes and grass. Then I made the camera constantly move downward, and made it so that the players would die if they went out of the camera's view or collided with an obstacle. I wanted it to feel like the man and dog were connected, with their actions affecting one another, so I made it so the leash between the players would also be affected by collision, by creating an edge collider that followed the line renderer. After that, I decided to go to bed and begin designing levels the next day. I woke up expecting to spend day 3 designing tons of levels, but as I was working, I realized that endless random generation would be much better suited for this type of gameplay. So I decided to scrap the level system and start working on implementing random generation. I created a script that would spawn grids with these tiles at lowering Y positions every 4 seconds to achieve a scrolling ground effect. I also used triggers to delete grids once they were out of the camera's view. Then I started working on different situations made up of various obstacles and traps. I made things such as an angry cat that would chase you if you woke it up, a car crash, heavy traffic, and a maze made out of traffic guns. Just like with spawning the background tile map, every 4 seconds a random situation would be spawned at lowering Y positions. After that I added a score counter and a display of your best score to the corner of the screen. And that's pretty much all I did for day 3. I spent the morning of day 4 adding more situations such as a group of football players throwing footballs back and forth, a police chase, and a crowd of people. Then I started working on the game's music and sound effects. To make the music, I used a free tool called Bosca Seal. This program is great for beginners as it doesn't require any knowledge of music theory and it has a simple, easy to understand interface. After playing around with the tool for a while, I came up with this short, upbeat chiptune. It's not amazing, but I think it's good enough and fits the game pretty well. 
For the sound effects, I use a tool called SFXR by Thomas Pedersen, originally made to help Ludum Dare participants create sound effects for their games. This tool is also super easy to use. It can generate random sound effects of various types, like jumping or explosion sounds, and it has tons of parameters you can adjust to get exactly what you need for your game. After a little while, I ended up coming across sound effects that I liked for switching between characters and getting hit by an obstacle. <coughs> Another one of the optional challenges for the jam was to add local multiplayer support. So I added a two player mode where player one controlled a man and player two controlled the dog. I made it so two people could play together on one keyboard or with two separate controllers. After that I made a simple title screen. I wanted to make something in the style of old Game Boy title screens. I decided to call the game Murphy's Law. It doesn't have anything to do with the jam's theme of connecting, but the game reminds me of Murphy's Law, which states that anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. As I was making the game, I couldn't get Murphy's Law out of my head, so I really wanted to incorporate it somehow into the title. After that, I added a little bit of polish to certain parts of the game, such as this death screen. At this point, I was pretty much finished with the game, so I went to bed. Day 5 was the last day of the jam, and I had until 8 o'clock in my time zone to submit the game. Luckily I didn't have much to finish. I made a simple splash screen recommending the player to use a controller, since it really did make the game a lot easier and more enjoyable. Then I exported a WebGL build for my game and tested it to make sure everything was working. I had plenty of time after that to create an itch.io account and set up a page for my game. And with that, I was finally finished. If you want to check out the game, there will be a link to its itch.io page in the description. Don't hesitate to leave feedback, as it helps me learn and grow as a developer. I really appreciate all the feedback I've gotten so far by other participants in the jam. One thing I've realized from feedback is that maybe the game is a little too hard, especially without a controller. I wanted the game to be hard at first, but get easier as you learn the different patterns and strategies, but I think I would have been better off making the game a little less frustrating. A little more playtesting and a little less tunnel vision would have helped. Overall though, participating in this game jam was an awesome experience and I definitely will be taking part in more jams in the future. I also want to keep making game dev related videos, so it would mean a lot if you subscribed and liked this video if you enjoy this type of content. That's everything, so thanks so much for watching and I hope I'll see you in the next video.